starting today. How's that for being as about as grandiose as you can possibly be? Forever and ever starting, forever and ever, amen, starting today. And if you missed it, you might think, oh my goodness, I missed forever and ever. So the good news is I've got you two bits of good news this morning. Last week's message is on YouTube, so you can watch it. And just like last week, we said the rest of your life, that is our forever and ever, starts today. Think about that. Every day, your forever and ever starts. It starts today. And we've been each given one life to invest and one life to live to, in the best possible way. And that's, of course, the we believe as Christians is the way that, that Jesus, the way that Jesus intended. And there is a source for answering many of the challenge areas in our life. And as we said last week, it's a source that many of us take for granted. And it's something that maybe we repeat often. And it's the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. There are seven phrases. Uh, sometimes they're called petitions that are part of the Lord's Prayer. And, and every single one of them is an answer, I will bet you, to one of the stress areas of your life, one of the challenge areas in your life. And I'm going to read, last week we read the, uh, the version of it that was in Luke. And this week we're going to read uh, the version of it that's in Matthew. It's coming from the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, Jesus was pretty direct. He said, said this. He said, pray like this. Matthew chapter 6. He said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food that we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So last week, we looked at the very beginning. We looked at basically two words, our Father. And uh, we said this answers what we might call the connection challenge in our life. Understanding that oftentimes we perceive God to be very distant and very out there. And it's a challenge for us to connect closely to God because we wants a, we know we say that he wants a connection with us, he wants a friendship with us, he wants a relationship with us. But understanding what he meant by pray our Father uh, is, I think, an important starting point for the life he wants to give us. And actually, um, it, it, we said God wants us to address him as the equivalent of daddy or dad. That's what that means. That's what uh, Abba, our Father, means. And that's what he told Jesus, his disciples, to pray. He says, pray like this. And he says, our Father. So, one of the connection challenges that we did not talk about last week is the next phrase right after our Father, and it's really part of last week's connection, as I say, challenge. It goes, our Father in heaven, or as we say in the King James language, our Father who art in heaven. And um, um, <clears throat> part of that, at first glance, seems a little bit confusing. Didn't you just say that Jesus wants to call, a, call us, call him God or, 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 or Daddy? But then he says, who art in heaven. And heaven seems like it's so far away. It, at least I think it is. So where is heaven anyway? Where is it? Um, is, 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 is heaven in the sky? Is, is it on a beach in San Diego? Is it on the mountains of Colorado? In the mountains of Colorado, is it is heaven in Iowa, like that old movie used to say? Um, well, the Greek word for heaven is the word Uranus. Uranus. What does that sound like? It sounds like the planet Uranus, doesn't it? And that even sounds even further away. I mean, that doesn't help. That doesn't help us at all. Here's my point. When we say our Father in Heaven, I think most of us visualize something like this. Something out of Star Wars. Our Father from a long, long time ago from a galaxy far away, you know? It's, it's just way, way, way out there. But let's look at the words of Jesus in context. I think that's really important this morning. The in heaven part of the prayer is 
something that I think is confusing, but just stick with me on this one, and I think you'll understand where I'm, where I'm headed. Actually, that phrase, in heaven, could be tr better translated, in the heavens. In the heavens. And so that makes heaven a uh, plural, right? There's an S on, on, the, on, on the end of it. And actually, this is very consistent with the Old Testament and the New Testament interpretation or understanding of, of, of what heaven was. It actually, the Apostle Paul referred to a third heaven. And, and you think, okay, what is he talking about now? But actually, they just sort of named things that we uh, have other names for with, with the word heaven. The third heaven was more our traditional idea of where people go, the place where, where Jesus followers go, believers go when they, when they, when they die. So that's kind of our, our traditional understanding of, of heaven. That's the third heaven. The second heaven is, think about a layer here. If, if, if that's the furthest out, the second heaven is the sky and the outer space. That's what they would refer to as the second heaven. What do we refer to that as? The atmosphere or the, 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 the sky and the outer space, I guess, is what, is, is what we call it. And then the first heaven, the first heaven is right here. It's the air we breathe. It's the atmosphere that's all around us. And so when Jesus is saying, our Father in heaven, he's not saying somebody out in a very distant galaxy far, far away. When he tells us to pray, our, our dad, he's saying, our dad who is as close as the air we breathe. Think about that. That's a radically different understanding than I think than, than most, most of us had. Dad, who is here right now, could not be closer to you. Could not be closer. And because God is so close, the prayer helps us connect with God because we understand then that I'm never alone. Unless I'm without air. And that, that, then that's a bit bigger problem. <laughs> I can speak to my dad. I can speak to him always because he's right with us. Jesus promised that. He said, I am always with you. I will never leave you to forsake you. I am with you. His last words, I am with you to the ends of the world, ends of the earth. So we can call him dad and know he's always around. And I believe that that's really the answer to our connection challenge. God is dad. So that leads us to the next phrase that we're going to talk about more this morning. And um, it's another one that's not so easy to understand, I think, when we think about the words involved in it. It's, it's Hollywood be your name. Hollywood be your name. Now, why in God's name is God's name such a big deal? Think about that. Why is God's name such a big deal? Um, I think that um, Halloween, Hallowed Be Your Name, poses two questions in my mind. What does the word Hollywood mean? Hollywood mean. When I, think of, I, when I hear that word, I think of Halloween. Um, or I think of the hallowed halls of justice, the Supreme Court, or something like, the, like, like that. So why does God say that his name is to be hallowed? Hallowed simply means important or valued. Important or valued. To hallow God's name is to, is to honor God's name, to set it up with its true value. So what does it mean to see something for its true value? Well, I heard the story one time about an antique buyer who went to this little antique shop and uh, he, was, he was looking for, for bargains. And uh, right by the register, there was a cat drinking milk out of a bowl that he recognized right away. He, he was thinking, oh my goodness, this is a bowl that's part of the Ming Dynasty. I mean, this bowl is worth thousands. So he was excited, but he knew he had to be real coy about it. So, so slightly, he went over to the owner and said, he said, I have to have that cat. Have to have that cat. So I love that cat. Here's a hundred bucks for that for that cat. And and by the way, I'll need a dish to feed milk on the way home. So you can just throw in that old one there. And the owner said, Well, actually, that cat is just an ordinary alley cat, and she's yours. But I'll give you another bowl to use. That bowl is from the Ming Dynasty, and I could never sell it. But the strangest thing has happened since I put it out there. I've sold seventeen cats. <laughs> 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 uh, 
that's guy that that's people that recognize value and that that leads us to the next question is why would anyone value a cat no that's not the next question no sorry about that <laughs> no what's the big deal about God's name what's the big deal about God's name so what's so valuable about God's name? Well, we live in a day when God, his name, his person, his will, his desire for us are not seen for anything near their worth. That's a bold statement to say, but I think we can really understand that. Sometimes it's used as a curse word. I always wonder how God feels about that. I know how I would feel, you might feel, if, if people used our names like Paul Blankety this. Or, or Elaine Blankety this, or oh my Jeff, can you imagine that? That just, we would think, that sounds so funny, that sounds so ridiculous to, to say that. I think God kind of shakes his head and smiles and said, realizing that people don't even know what they're saying, what, who they're talking to. And because of that, I think we have, the, 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 the title today is, I think we have a reverence challenge in our world. I think we have a reverence challenge in our lives. Let me tell you another story. A few years ago, David and Daniel were invited to a birthday party. But this was not just any birthday party. This was a birthday party that was going to be held in a gymnasium, which made it a good one already. And the hosts had asked Alvin Gentry, the head coach of the Phoenix Suns, to come at that time. The head coach of the Phoenix Suns to come and run a bunch of junior high boys through a basketball workout. How cool is that? I mean, that is just like the greatest thing. Several times in anticipation of this big day, I can remember David and Daniel, and especially me, saying, do you realize who we get to meet and who we get to practice with? I mean, this is Alvin Gentry. He's the son's coach. Do you realize how much he knows about basketball? Do you realize how much better we're going to get by, by just being in proximity to his coaching? Oh my goodness, this is going to be fantastic. Now, What's the point of my little story? Well, if I value and revere this sports person, emphasis on the word person, so, so much for his knowledge and his ability as a basketball coach, you can kind of extrapolate this. How much more should I value time to talk with God? With God. I mean, when Jesus said, Hallowed be your name, part of what he was telling his disciples and us today is, do you realize who is offering this available connection anytime? No birthday party or special invitation needed. Do you realize how much he knows? I mean, he is all wise. And he is, what he's done, he is all powerful. I mean, do you know how much he loves you? Do you know how much... He personally wants to be involved in your life and affect the world through you. Do you realize who this is and, and who wants to connect with us? Let's give proper reverence and proper respect to God. God's name deserves my reverence because of the vastness of who he is. In Bible days, when you described who you were, remember your name described who you rem were. Remember the word, Peter was the rock. Peter was the rock. Abraham was the father of many nations. The, the name Ruth means friend or companion, which, which certainly fits in with the person of the person who was in the Old Testament. And God indicates who his name is. They represent his character. There's a long list on the, on, the, on the screen this morning. God uses many names and descriptions for God. When we read our Bibles in English, we see names for God. We see, most of the time it says God or it says Lord. But that's just the way our English translates it. There are many others that, fr that, are, that, are, that, that, that are from the original language that, that are phrases that tell us a lot about God. For instance, maybe you've heard the, the phrase God Almighty. Well, that's the Hebrew word El Shaddai. 
El Shaddai. And when we read the words God Almighty, we should, we should, sing, we should say, wow, God is all-powerful. Or when we read the word, the, the Lord is peace, that's a, that's a phrase that comes in the Bible. That's Jehovah Shalom. And of course, that word Shalom, we, we know what that means, that God gives us peace. The, the names that God wants for to us to understand him by have everything to do with our lives. He wants, Jesus told his disciples in John 14, 27, he said, the peace I give you isn't a fragile peace like the world gives. He said, the peace I give you is everlasting. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. See, the world's peace is based on circumstances that are sometimes good and sometimes bad. But God's peace is based on God's character. And that's always there because his character never changes. So when you see that phrase, the Lord is peace in Scripture, understand that that's exactly what, 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 what the Scriptures are meaning. Another one, God is my healer, Jehovah Rapha. Uh, God brings healing. The amazing thing about God's names is that for each of God's names, it matches up to a need in our life. It matches up to a need. God's names show us how he can meet the deepest needs in my, in my life, in your life. Some days we need healing. There's all sorts of other ones. God is my rock. God is my light. God is my comforter. God is everlasting. I, take, take a look at the list of names on your notes page. I would just encourage you to look at that list. And what I want you to do this morning, in the next slide, is as you understand the vastness of who God is, help us to depend on Him today. Go to your notes page and, and write down one of those names into this sentence this morning. God, or Jehovah Rapha, uh, or Jehovah Shalom, or whatever one you pick from that. I am depending on you today for a challenge that I'm going through. This is a real need that I have today. That'll make the, God's name much more personal, much more informative for you today. God, I am depending on you. I am depending on you. Second observation that comes from this, from this passage is God's name deserves my, my reverence because he is greater than my biggest fear. There's many scriptures that, that, that come out of this. Psalm 148, it says, Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over earth and heaven. Psalm 34 says this, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Uh, the Psalms talk about all of God's names. Sometimes things happen in our life. And when I take the time to recognize God's greatness in his name, for me the focus tends to shift. All of a sudden I'm not the center of the universe anymore. Uh, all of a sudden I realize God's, God's greatness. It's not for me to hold everything together. Do you ever get fooled into thinking you're holding the whole universe together at times and you begin to just get very, very, very worried? We think that if we stop worrying the universe would cease to exist as we know it. How ridiculous is that? How ridiculous is that? The truth is God is running the universe and is doing just fine before I got here and he's going to run it just fine after I leave. That's the greatness of God and sometimes I need to have my perspective revised by scripture. The Bible often talks about God as being a rock. We, we live in a rock sort of country. When I drove in this morning, I, we drove past Black Mountain and the boulders, and there's just some immense boulders up there, and it made me think about that it's, people come here just to, just to look at the rocks. Like a, they go to the Grand Canyon or they go to Sedona, and they say, wow, look at that. Those are huge. Nobody could ever move them. Nobody could ever move them. I think that we need just a little bit more wow in our life, but honestly, I can do a lot better than even the Grand Canyon or the boulders or, or Sedona. It doesn't come from admiring a rock or it doesn't come from watching a great game on television or, 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 or going to a, an, an, an incredible movie. The power of God, the unchanging nature of God is something that makes us feel wow. 
Maybe that comes from looking at the mountains and you realize, oh my goodness, that's God that made that. Or the sunset. Or, or maybe you've had recently in your life the birth of a little one. That is one that just, just, just blows you away when you th see the greatness of God. That puts my life in perspective. How about yours? And it, and it gives me the peace that I need. Psalm, Psalm 31 3 says this it says, You are my rock and my fortress, and for the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. There's nothing else more solid than God that you stand and be secure no matter what. So I want you to do another fill in the blank here this morning. Write down today, God's power is bigger than my fear about, and you fill in the blank. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's something going on in your family. Maybe it's a fear that just kind of comes to mind and it's always with you. God's power is bigger than any fear about and you can fill in the blank this morning. And that leads me to the third observation about God's name this morning. God's name, in God's name, God calls me to be a part of his family. When my kids were born, they immediately took on our last name, Whitcup. God does the same thing. He does an amazing thing. The great and holy name that God has, he invites you and I to share it. That's amazing to me. God's name is also God's reputation. And there's a difference between reputation and character. Character is what you are. Reputation is what other people think of you. The amazing thing to me that God has put a good deal of his reputation in our hands, hasn't he? What do we think of God? Well, it's... A lot of times it's from looking around and seeing people. That's not totally accurate, but, but it's a high responsibility. We're his family. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2.19, he says, you are members of God's family. You are members of God's family. That's why we call Christians Christians because Christ is in that name. We are part of God's family. We are named by his very name. And as we begin to understand the, the depths of his love for us, then we can begin to live like a name-bearing child of God. We live, that, we live out that love. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says it this way, because you are his dear children, he says, live a life filled with love, following the, the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. We're God's children. Because we are God's children, we represent his name. He is the light of the world, and then he calls us to be the light of the world too. That's another way we bear his name. God knew that we need to pray, hallowed be thy name. Not because God is some vain, egocentric, compliment-groping God. No. No. We don't play, pray, hallowed be thy name because God needs to hear that. On the contrary, the prayer is for our benefit. It matches that challenge for reverence in our life. It reminds me that power comes from him. It's I need to reverence him. I need to reverence him. Lord, make my whole life a prayer to you. May my whole life be a prayer to you. God, make my life honor your name. So now I want you to write down something else on your notes this morning, or at least look at this, fill in this blank. It says, because I bear the name of Jesus, because I bear the name of Jesus, I will act like God's child this week by, and you fill in the blank. Maybe you know you need to ask for forgiveness of somebody in your family. Maybe it's your child that you need to ask forgiveness to. Maybe your spouse or your parents need an apology from you for something. Maybe you're going to say, I will act like God's child by, by taking a step of integrity at work. A step of integrity. Or maybe a step of purity in your marriage. You've been facing maybe this integrity challenge or this purity challenge for a really long time. 
Honestly, you'll never regret doing the right thing. Taking that step. I will act like God's child this week by just realizing how much God loves me. Though, I may not be feeling it right now. Thank God God's love is not dependent on my feelings. God's love is, is, is constant. It's always there. There are many days I don't feel like he loves me, but I know he still does. I know he still does. That's, 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 that's my thinking that's off. You see, God's name is a blessing. It's not a curse. It's a blessing when we honor God's name because it means we are placing God in the position that is rightfully and uniquely his. I get to connect with the one who is the most dependable, the most wise, the most powerful, and he is dad, and he's always there. So when we pray this morning, we'll pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But I want you to begin to think, dad, who is always with me, closer than, as close as the air I breathe, May your name be valued and revered. Join me in a word of prayer. Dad, I thank you that you're always here and that you're always close. You're always here. And I can always talk with you no matter what. And I value you. I, I respect you. And I trust you. I want my life to honor your name in everything that I am, everything that I say, everything that I do. And thank you for your forgiveness that's always there. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.